but the thing that I've been thinking about this whole time, like when we've been doing all these position previews, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got all these different guys and, you know, maybe there's a guy like Devin Vassell that we think is, you know, can be an all-star one day, you know, can be that all-star caliber player. Even, you know, you and I may have some hope for, for Jeremy Sohan there, Mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll have to see what happens with that and his role on the team and the makeup of everything. But with those guys, you know, there's some things like right up front that, you can kind of um, you can ha- you can list strengths and weaknesses for those guys. When you go to the weaknesses portion, like for Jeremy Sohan, for example, like there was there was a you know I don't mean this in a negative way, but a, a list there of at least five bullet points that can come to your head, like right off the top. For you sure, know, maybe a little bit less for Devin Vassell, but still with those guys, there's things you can point out. Mm-hmm. When it comes to Victor Wembanyama, uh, <laughs> I didn't really decide today or it decide until today. Um, you know, what I I could list. Cause really when I think of it off the top of my head, I'm like, okay, what are we, (laughs) what am I supposed to do here? This guy, you could already argue is a top 15 player in the league. We know he's the future of the NBA. I mean, we've, we've talked about this for two years at this point, ever Mm -hmm. since the lottery in 2023, we've known like what the potential of this could be if we won that lottery, which we did end up doing. So I don't just want to sit here and repeat, oh, he's seven foot four. He can Mm -hmm. put the ball on the floor. He can shoot. He can score at all three levels. He led the league in blocks last year. A lot of people thought he probably should have been defensive player of the year. The Olympics may have shown that case to be even more true, depending on how you look at it. Um, But I did come up with a few things in general, but but what are your thoughts on kind of evaluating Victor mm. just with the enigma that he is? Yeah, in terms of just like his game, I think you summed it up perfectly. There's really no weaknesses offensively. He can score at all three levels defensively. Probably the most versatile defensive player we have ever seen, period, in the NBA. Uh, and he definitely has the potential to be the greatest defender of all time uh, when it's all said and done. And last year, statistically, had a, had a phenomenal season, the clear front runner for Rookie of the Year. Uh, obviously, early it was between him and Chet, but he ran away with it the second half of the season. Um, in terms of things that he can improve on, potential weaknesses, it was kind of difficult to find because he he does everything so well. But I came up with two that are kind of general, or actually, we can even make this three. The first one is just impacting winning. Um, okay. Because obviously we had a really bad record last year. That wasn't his fault. We saw the difference between when he was on the court versus not on the court. Uh, but I think with him being so great already, uh, the media is immediately going to bring that into the into question. Like we're losing games. It's going to be on his shoulders. You're right. Whether that's right or wrong, that's how they're going to paint the picture. So that's one. The second part of that is not settling for outside shots. I know he's capable as a three-point shooter. He shot 32% last year. He hit a lot of clutch jumpers late in games, but I think there were also a handful of games where, you know, he kind of got lost along the perimeter, not completely his fault. He played a lot of the year without a true point guard, which he has won this year in Chris Paul. So hopefully that some of that thing, some of that uh, stuff will be remedied, but you want to, you wanted that guy that's seven foot four and as dominant as he is to get closer to the rim, especially as games come down um, to the final buzzer and i think part of that also has to do with stamina so i'm going to say hopefully he's been working on his stamina and able to play 30 plus minutes a game and into overtime games because we did see that kind of him hit a roadblock at the mid-season point and and sometimes kind of um take a toll on him late in games we had to re-implement a a minutes restriction we did we did uh, and, and the last point I'll make for Victor Wimbanyama is something that LaMarcus Aldridge actually brought up, former Spur, on the All the Smoke podcast. And that's, he's so good. He has so many moves in his arsenal that it's, it feels like sometimes he doesn't know which one to pick in any given situation. So he's like, I would just simplify it. For LaMarcus, it was the left shoulder post hook and the left shoulder fadeaway. Right? right, that was his go-to move, and any counter or additional move he had to make from that was just up to whatever the defense gave or showed him. Right, so Victor, you know, it, it was like he there's so many colors on his on his canvas, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He doesn't know which one to pick. So if he could just make it a little more simple, simplify his offensive game, especially in the first, second, and third quarter, I think that would go a long way for his stamina and for his efficiency. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything you just said. You know, the stamina point, I think, is a good one. And I think some of that is also just adjusting to the pace of the NBA, learning the differences and the intricacies 
mm-hmm. of the game. Um, so I think, you know, our, uh, you could argue that that's naturally going to get better, For uh, sure. especially with another NBA strength and conditioning camp. Obviously, he did have the Olympics this summer. So, you know, you do want to take that into account. But uh, I think especially with how that ended, I think even before that this season, he was going to be coming in with, you know, an even more determined mentality. But with the way that that ended, I know that's only going to, you know, add smoke or excuse me, add fuel to that fire. Um, that was, you know, he he's we've seen it in him, you know, since the first interviews before he even, mm. you know, uh, was, you know, before the NBA lottery in 2023. Um, there's always been something special about him. That's why, you know, he was the most hyped prospect uh, pr- prospect since LeBron. And it's not just o- on the floor. It's also off the floor. Um, but like you said, talking about stamina, that's definitely something to watch. I almost even, you know, like when I mentioned earlier and talked about how we re-implemented that minutes restriction, that mm-hmm. was something that had even just slipped my mind, you know, after this whole off season that, you know, we forget about. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of confidence in that, you know, last year before the season started, you know, with all the injury potential and stuff like that, we talked extensively about, you know, his training regimen, you know, his hour and a half warm up and how his main trainer was hired by the Spurs. Right. So I definitely have a lot of confidence in that. Obviously, we're Spurs fans. Obviously, we're biased. But again, I've said this in more recent episodes. It's hard to put a cap on anything for this guy. I mean, and that's an understatement, it feels like. Um, and then what was the first thing you said again? There was impacting winning and then yes. finding a simple. Yeah. 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 So for the impacting winning part, I completely agree there too. You know, at the end of the day, you you know, he wants to get more wins on the table. The Spurs do adding Harrison Barnes and Chris Paul is going to help out a lot with that, you know, in our opinions. Um, But, you know, that is something that, you know, you want to just see that progression. You want to see more wins added. And and I think that is uh, something that's very fair. I came up with three different things. I actually was able to find some things like on the floor. Um, Granted, it's very nitpicky, you know, it's like almost like he's already good at a lot of these things, but it's just like, how can he get a little bit better and be even more effective? And I think that kind of ties into your third point, but I'll read off my points here. We see a couple of y'all in the ta- in the chat, Wembeats Castle, always here, John G as well. We appreciate you guys. Um, but here's what I wrote down. So strength was the first thing I wrote down. And it's mm-hmm. not to say that I don't have confidence Um, that that's going to happen. Kind of, we just laid out his trainer, NBA strength and conditioning program, all that stuff. I do think that that's going to be the case. But here's the other thing. This is a 20-year-old Victor Wimbanyama. Like, he's still growing into his body. As as insane as that is to think about, like, think about him when he's 25, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's, so a lot of this is just his age and, and, you know, time. You know what I'm saying? Um, Whenever it comes to strength. But the reason that I think that that could benefit him is, is twofold. So first, interior defense. I know that sounds weird with <laughs> with him leading the league in blocks and basically against like 90% of the league, Victor's interior defense, there's nothing to criticize there. And that's why I kind of wrote down a little caveat here in my notes, but this is only really, the improvement that I'm referencing here is only really against like MVP type bigs, like a Joel Embiid, you know, who gave him 70 last year or a Nikola Jokic. But while I'm saying that, there's still moments like the Bucks game last year in the comeback win where he stuffs Giannis at the rim. So when I say that, that is more like a very specific tier of, you know, former MVP bigs, you know, mm. that just have like 50 pounds on him at this point. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, Just to hold his own there. So, you know, like Joel can't do what he did last year. And you could argue, I know the Olympic rules are different, but you could argue you saw some improvement from that um, in the summer when he had to match up with Joel Embiid again in the Olympic final. Um, Granted, you know, very different set of circumstances, but still, it wasn't like Joel could just go in and and do what he did like we saw in the Sixers game last year, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I I said this only really improves his play against MVP bigs. He was already fantastic overall. And then the other thing that I think strength helps with is his post control, Um, whether that be backing people down, uh, putting his guys, his back into guys. Um, But also, I think that would just help with his post bag in general. And Mm -hmm. that was the second thing. And this ties into the LaMarcus point that you mentioned. Um, It really, uh, the thing I wrote down is just post moves, just adding more to that bag because you know, he has that skill set with his size, length and skill. 
I mean, we know Tim Duncan's still around the facility. He's getting coached by Greg Popovich. David's still around. We, we've seen them interact uh, through all throughout the years. And it's not mm-hmm. just those guys that are going to be teaching him post moves, but you know, Timmy's going to be in the practice facility giving him pointers. And just with, you know, his shooting ability, whether that be the post fadeaway, we saw Wemby's castle mentioned earlier. Imagine Wemby doing a sky hook, um, you know, just putting him in the post and, you know, him just adding to that skill set, you know, a little bit this season to where it looks more fluid and smooth in the specific moves that he likes. Now, again, that ties into the LaMarcus point. He's got to figure out which one of those that he does like because we don't just want to be throwing everything out there when, you know, maybe he could find two that he can really fine tune and just be more effective at, you know, in that kind of LaMarcus-esque um, role, if you will. Um So that's another thing I wrote down. And then the last thing I wrote down for Victor, well, actually two more things, but ball handling. And I know we saw so much. We saw so much good ball handling from Wemby, but there were some times where he'd lose his dribble, you know, trying to speed up in transition or something like that. Um, You know what I mean? Or maybe he Mm -hmm. tried to take people off the dribble and get pickpocketed. We saw at the beginning of the season, you know, the fluidity wasn't as good as it was at the end of the season, but that's also a testament to his improvement. But the things I wrote down just a little more control with his dribble slash coordination. I think we already saw that growth. I think we'll continue to see that. Um, But imagine his step backs getting even more smooth. Like how it's already deadly, but if he could get more control with that, it's going to be literally insane and like tough for anybody to defend. Mm. The other thing I was thinking about, like if he can get some crossover crossovers going, Ethan, I know that's a, that's a lot to ask, but remember we we remember at all-star weekend, he's working with Jamal Murray or excuse me, not Jamal Murray, Jamal Crawford. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And, uh, and I believe that they did end up like meeting if I'm, I may just be making that up in my head over the summer, but I I thought I saw something like that. They did end up working out together. They did. Okay. Okay. I'm glad my memory didn't fail me there. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's as out of the question as much as, you know, I'm not expecting an insane jump, but when you're working with Jamal Crawford, Chris Paul added to the roster. That was something I totally, you know, I'm just so fixated on Chris Paul helping the guards that we have because, you know, we're when you think about improvement, you think more about our guards, not Victor Wimbanyama, you know, the franchise. But still, think about the things that CP3 can teach Victor whenever it comes to his pass vision, mm-hmm. pass vision as well as his ball handling. I mean, that is just, and pass IQ as well is nothing, another thing that I wrote down. Um, but with those crossovers, man, if he can, you know, dribble around somebody we could see more pull up mid-range jumpers things like that and obviously I mentioned the step backs earlier again this is super nitpicky because what he's doing at his size is already so crazy um but at the same time if he can improve a little bit there get a little bit more controlled add some more moves to his bag that just makes him even more scary um Mm -hmm. as an offensive player and then the last thing is just shooting we believe in his jump shot. That's not what I'm saying here. You know, this kind of goes back to the the Mamu Jeremy Sohan thing that we talked about last week. If you put their jumpers side by side, which one looks better, right? Um, and he still shot at 32% overall from the field from three last season. And specifically, when I say shooting, I mean I mean three point shooting. Want to want to clarify that because his mid range is already pretty much pretty much down. Um, and the main thing whenever it comes to his three point shooting, Ethan is just the catch and shoot percentage because we saw the differences between that last year. He shot a higher percentage of off the dribble threes versus his catch and shoot threes, Mm -hmm. you know, in the pick and pops with Devin or CP three, you know, or, or whoever it may be, you want him to just be able to, or even maybe sometimes if he gets left open, I don't think that's going to happen that often, but if we can increase that percentage a little bit on the catch and shoot specifically, you know, that's one thing that again, (laughs) I mean, we'll just make him more and more deadly. So I think you can kind of see there a lot of that is nitpicky, but I did find some things that, you know, I think could be improved a little bit and just make him even more dangerous. Couldn't agree more. 